My name is Rocio Garcia, and I'm from York, Pennsylvania. I'm currently studying at York College of Pennsylvania to earn my certification in secondary education with the focus of English. I want to be a teacher because in high school, my English teacher, Miss Eline, saw me struggling and came to me without me having to ask. She would ask for my time before school started and give me lessons on basic English grammar. I began to see the beauty in literature and grew to love it. Just like Miss Eli, I want to help students like me and show students that there are teachers that care about them and are willing to help. When learning to become a teacher, it is essential to know how you're going to teach your lesson. Education Technology is a course that shows inspiring teachers how to teach their lessons while using technology. This course teaches you how to use technology such as Earpod, GoFormative, Adobe Spark, EduCreation, and much more. You are even given the opportunity to create lessons infused with technology in a real classroom set. Along with learning different types of technology, this course also teaches about the technology trends that are happening in schools around the world. One of the many technology trends we are looking over in class is the idea of online learning. Online learning is exactly as it sounds. It's the idea of teaching students through online usage and be used as a resource. So the question is, how can online learning help students learn? A report made by D. Frank Smith found that online schools and courses are meeting needs for students in those cases where students do not have access to adequate physical school and course options. This gives students more opportunity in their education and not restrain them to limited options. However, D. Frank Smith also found that despite there being proof of that digital content and tools can assist in boosting outcomes, the broad base of online learning usage and effectiveness is still unstudied. This comes to show that online learning isn't guaranteed and to be solution to all classroom problems. But in the end, not all students learn the same, therefore online learning is still something to consider using in the classroom. In traditional classroom settings, students are seated in rows facing the front of the room as the teacher gives instruction. However, many schools believe this way of teaching is no longer effective as it was when it began. Now many schools are getting rid of traditional classroom instruction and are turning towards personalized learning. So you're probably thinking, what is personalized learning? Personalized learning is getting students out of fixed routines and instead creating an instructional approach that meets the needs of each learner. In other words, the pace of learning is adjusted. Lessons are created by students' interests, students are given the choice on how they want to learn, and learning is supported by technology. Although personalized learning may not be for all, Tim Walker believes the general idea behind personalized learning is that the fixed time, place and curriculum of traditional classrooms is still suited to meet the demands of a diverse student population that has a wide range of learning needs. Lastly, here's something that Maris Stanbury wants us to think about. We're all skilled at clapping our hands, but would find this too boring to do for fun. Like clapping hands, class activities can't be based solely on skills. They have to be exciting and engaging as well. A way to do this is by implementing mass customized learning in the classroom. This is when Instruction is created in a way that meets the needs of students and their interests. The tricky part of mass customized learning according to eSchool News is creating a classroom in which there is a balance between both skill and engagement. I believe in the multiple intelligence theory which uses tailored learning activities that meet the needs of students. Not all students learn to see, therefore I want to create a classroom setting in which students are given many opportunities and not restricted in any way. I believe that using different types of technology as well as personalized and mass customized learning will allow me to do this. These standards are what help educators change classrooms for the digital age of learning. So how will this help me in my classroom? The answer is by following the standards to create a fun and engaging lesson. So what is synchronized and asynchronized technology approaches? Synchronous communication is working together at the same time and that includes in the online learning world as well. In other words, communication is done instantly regardless of time and location. Some examples of this is online chat rooms on and online conferences. A way I plan to use this in my classroom with the use of technology is through Nearpod, GoFormative, and HP Review. These technologies give me access to see students' results instantly and give me the ability to provide feedback as quickly as possible. Asynchronous communication is relaying information with a timeline. This means that when it comes to communication, there is a time gap in getting a response. Examples include emails and discussion forms. Flipgrid, Adobe Spark, EduCreation are perfect tools to use as asynchronous communication in the classroom. All technologies give students time to do their work and allow me to evaluate students in a quick and easy way. Before starting this class, my idea of using technology was something I didn't want to do because personally, I don't like using technology. However, after using technology for my lesson demo, 
I realized that it isn't about what I want to do, but it's about what best works for students. Therefore, if my students want to and do better with technology, then it is something I'm willing to use in the future.